everybody. Dash the, uh... <laughs> Hold on. There we go. All right. Okay, much better. I was getting blinded by the light Manfred Mann style over there, or Bruce Springsteen, whichever you prefer. I'd be curious to know which is the you think the better of the two. Anyway, <laughs> back to the task at hand. I've already had a squirrel moment, and the video's just begun. Welcome to Vicious RV. We're up here in, obviously, sunny Coopersville, Michigan today, taking a look at little 21CK Shasta. Um, I've done a couple of these little Shastas, and you folks have said, you know what? They're not the flashiest. They're not the fanciest thing out there but I respect them because they're not trying to oversell what they are and what they aren't. They're, I think, a really good example of what I call smarter class camping, where it's it's a just the facts, ma'am, kind of camper. It's the things that really matter the most, um, you know, just where you need them. Uh, this is a, a, a tried and true floor plan, and I, I respect their execution of this. Um, it, it's no slides, it's no carpet, it's easy, it's simple, it's lightweight. And Shasta's been really good about making sure that they are um, being very selective on what they uh, do with their RVs. So their pricing has stayed far more accessible to a lot of people than a lot of the other things out there, which have just, I mean, let's, let's just call a spade a spade and a duck a duck. RV pricing has gone up quite a bit over the last couple of years, and Shasta's done their part to try to resist that. So we've got a, uh, a front camp queen bed that while not truly a private bedroom because of the way it's kind of orientated, it still feels private enough. And for the most part, I think this is going to be a solo or maybe a couples camper. Um, it does have some decent guest capacity, although you could have uh, one or two smaller people with you because you do have a full down sofa and dinette. Han a bunch of other handy little things like it does have a gas grill hookup. I think they did very good on the awning space with what they had here. And this one has uh, excellent window coverage coming off the backside. Like I said, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't do everything. It's not big and flashy and fancy. But I respect it. I like it. I could see myself camping in this. This is kind of my, like, I don't want to go out and go glitzy glamping. I want to just go camping, and I don't want to be tempted to spend all my time inside the RV. Just like if you go on vacation, I don't want to spend the time in the hotel room. This is just the place I'm going to crash, you know? So I feel like the general message that I have on this RV is, like, you've seen this layout before. And I'm not going to say this is flawless execution. I'm not going to say it's perfect fit and finish, but frankly... I've seen worse for a lot more money, and for what you are getting out of this, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty impressed. I think that pound for pound, they're doing a very good job here. Now, it's a little more of a camper. It's not a glamper, but I think the more that you kind of go through this, the more you're going to see they were really smart at saying, okay, what smart features can we include for like almost no dollars? And there's a surprising amount of smart content like that in here. Like they don't include a TV from the factory. A lot of people go camping to not watch TV, but they do give you a spot up here that if you wanted to mount something, you got a pretty good place for it. And instead of like a built-in stereo, they're including the sound bar right here, which means they don't have outside speakers, which is actually something I do prefer. That means that there's less holes cut in the sidewall. There's less uh, potential areas for water penetration, which is the fancy sales way of saying leaks. Um, you know, leak is a four letter word. Well, I mean, leak is a four letter word. You know what I'm getting. Leak is a bad word in the RV industry and in, really in any industry. Um, I remember, you know, when I had my daughter, uh, when her diapers leaked, that was a, uh, a bad day, uh, as well. Oh man. Any parent, any first time parent, remember the first time the kids had a back end blowout? <laughs> you were like, so this is what being a parent is like, huh? Ah, well, anyway, um, I don't know how I got way off on that topic, but I'm going to back up a little bit here. One of the neat things that this does have is a, uh, a simple version of the LCI-1 control system. This little motion R2-D2 light right here will activate the panel so you can see what you need when you need it. And it's like your, your monitor uh, panel, your awning. If it had a slide, this is where you would actually operate the slide. Gas and electric water heater on this. And it's cool that we just have buttons, but... If you did want to go beep, boop, beep, boop, and you can download the uh, the One Control app on your phone and magically have a portable touchscreen command center, uh, which is kind of neat. Now, I'll give you a good with the bad. This does not have centralized air. That does mean that your front bedroom area with that curtain pole that we're going to see, it might struggle a little bit in the evening hours. I do think that that's more of a concern if you have like a guest or something, because for the most part, I kind of think this is going to be a one or two person camper, and maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's just kind of my two cents here. Now, um, I will leave you a link in the video description to a gray wolf with a similar floor plan that just says a giant rear U-dinette. 
This one went a little bit more of the Jayco route where you've got a, a separate dinette and sofa. But what's kind of nice about this is if it is just one or two of you, you have a little bit more individualized seating space. And when you're sitting here on the sofa, you're looking out over your campsite. And this actually brings to light something this floor plan does very nicely. It gives us some very respectable window coverage um, on a, a, a more accessible budget, you know? Uh, it's kind of just, I don't know. I'm just happy with what they've done and what they've accomplished up here. Now, let's start cracking everything open and uh, starting up top here. Um, anywhere that they could put storage, they did a good job of that. Notice how you have that simulated cinema seating fold-down armrest. Sofa can fold down into a sleeper. But notice how there's storage below that. And despite the fact that this is a budget-friendly trailer, they did include doors below the dinette, which I thought was a really nice find. Now, continuing around, flipping a 180 and opening up everything in the kitchen here, um... Sometimes when I see a camper like this, it'll be a really janky kitchen. Like it won't have a, a full-size sink or it won't have drawers or it won't have an oven. This has all of that. It has all of the things. They've done a good job of giving us a fully equipped, albeit small and simple trailer. It's just all packed into one compact, no slide, no carpet, easy cleaning, no floor vent kind of space. Now over here, that is a 10.7 uh, cubic foot, 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Uh, that is a fast cooling refrigerator, and uh, it is totally travel safe as well. Not to mention, it gives us larger capacity versus the gas electric two ways. But if you're looking for boondock camping, it may not be the best option. The thing is, this RV isn't really, I, I don't feel that this is like built with boondocking specifically in mind. It doesn't have giant holding tanks. It doesn't have a severe weather package. It doesn't have an awesome suspension system. It's just a straightforward camper but it gets the job done really well. And this is where I was kind of saying, although it's not technically a private bedroom, it because there's enough space between the living room and basically the bathroom blocking it off, and you have that privacy curtain right there, it feels like, I think, a, a pretty much privatized bathroom. Or bedroom. <laughs> privatized bathroom. As opposed to a public bathroom? I'm an idiot. I've located one major glitch with the RV. You can actually see it in the bathroom if you look right about here. But uh, never mind that. We'll get that removed before you take your RV home. Uh, what we're looking at in here, I do like that it's a medicine cabinet. Um, they The walls are a little blank over here. But I think that it, it, it just leaves you space to like hang a towel hook or a towel bar or something. Something that actually very pleasantly surprised me was the space around this toilet. Because it has that big cutaway. Take a look at this. I was very pleasantly surprised with the elbow room. And the leg room actually wasn't bad. Now, I couldn't stick my legs straight out. But, um, you know, I don't know how that's uh, how well that would work. Now, I'm, I don't know if there's room around there for a squatty potty. But is there real talk and no judgment? Is there anybody who takes a squatty potty with them camping? I've never even thought about that, but I could see that happening. I don't know. I just want is there is there a place in the market for an RV squatty potty? Never never thought about it. Okay, so back I don't know why I, I'm not like a sponsor for squatty potty. I don't know why I'm talking about it so much. I don't even have one or use one regardless. Why oh, I'm still talking about this. Skylight. There we go. Skylight above the shower. If you're over six foot like me, you saw how my head was very much in there. I was bonking my noggin in that thing. Um, the uh, the RV has a six and a half foot sidewall, so the skylight gives us that extra headroom. But notice it does have a full shower surround paneling. Now, I'm going to call this a shower, not even a shove, where it's kind of a pretend tub or anything like that. But it's got enough of a lip. That I think if you had to, like, if you were watching, say, Grandbaby, or if you're new parents and you haven't, like, moved into a bunkhouse or something yet, I think that you could make that work for a little baby bath right there. Hi, I'm Josh RV Nerd, and this is the RV Squatty Potty. No. Needs a better name. Camper Crapper. Mm, no. You know what? Still not right. Anyway, by the way, the privacy curtain that we saw... I do think that they accomplished it correctly by putting it on this side of the entry door. I've actually seen a couple brands encompass the entry door in their privacy curtain, which to me uh, feels like it's sort of defeating the purpose of the tr privacy curtain. You're forcing people to come in and look at you when you sleep. Now, again, some low-cost, nice touches. Even though this RV is not extra tall, the lights 
in the bedroom-ish area. They still just give you a switch for that so the lights can go out in Georgia when it's time. And both sides of the bed have household and USB plugs. When I start seeing um, a little more budget-friendly trailers like this, you know, the Camp Queen-style stick and tin trailers like we're looking at here, a lot of times uh, I start seeing the USB plugs go away. <gasps> no way. Oh, oh my Lord. Dude, at a glance, I looked up there and I'm like, there's a half inch gap above that. No freaking way. And then I realized I'm an idiot and that's just the trim that goes down along the wardrobe as it meets up with the nose line. But dude, at a glance, tell me that doesn't look like a big gaping shadow hole in there. Like, oh, wow. Sorry. That caught my attention. Um, what? Uh, okay, let's just shift gears again. TV hookups over here on the wall in the corner if you want to put a little wall mount. I suspect very few people are actually going to uh, use that. Um, one of the things here, it does have completely separate storage under the bed. A nice big storage chest. It doesn't have any sort of gas strut lift system. Actually, a, a very smart low dollar budget way of overcoming that that I've seen some people do is they'll take something like, um, you know when you lift up the hood of the car and you have to you know prop the rod up to hold it up? I've seen people basically do the, the 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 hood rod method of overcoming this if you don't feel like, you know, going the gas strut assisted route. And, you know, this is the th uh, third or fourth, I can't remember, Shasta that I've had the chance to review this year. And there's always something about the exterior look of them that I enjoy. And I think it's just the simplicity of it. It's not smothered with Nike and Adidas swooshes. And actually one of the things I think is very cool about it is for the most part, it's a painted exterior. If you think about it, a lot of those big fifth wheels or toy haulers or motorhomes, you spend thousands of dollars on an exterior paint package. And this just by default has aluminum painted paneling. So it's something that I think will maybe hold up a little bit better to, to weathering as compared to some other things. Now they've done a good job on this one of the power awning. They uh, Some of the chances I felt have gone a little, a little chintzy, a little shy on the awning space. And I don't feel that here. You know, it starts all the way at the back wall. It nicely covers that anti-slam entry door. And you notice it goes right up here to the uh, extra large storage compartment. Take a look at this thing. Um, now, the it doesn't have these giant doors on both sides, but if you notice, it does have a full-size baggage door on the other side. So it's not like that's not a small door over there. They just have an extra large door over here, uh, which I think is kind of cool. Very handy if you got like an extra like kind of outside cooler for drinks that you're transporting or something like that. I don't know. Like, what would you pack in this big section right here? I'm actually pretty sure that's where Clark W. Griswold would put Aunt Edna on a road trip. Now again, she's a price sensitive camper, so it does have the silver twist locks on the baggage doors, not like slam latches, but it does still have the nice magnet holdbacks and the uh, big protected hinge uh, on the, uh, the baggage door there. So again, some smart content where they could. Now over here, look between those two windows. You've also got a stovetop vent exhaust hood. That's something that some more, far more expensive RVs, even some fifth wheels I've seen lacking. So if you do some cooking inside, you can actually get the vast majority of that heat uh, out of there. And you might have also noticed too how every window opens for airflow. That's nice. That's nice. That's stuff that little campers don't always do. Now, um, it doesn't have an enclosed underbelly or anything. It's just a spring, summer, fall camper. And back here, you're like, uh, is something missing? And Technically no, but kind of yes. This comes prepped for a, a rear cargo rack and <laughs> crap. I was gonna walk around the back of this trailer where there's one of those cargo racks, but it appears we are backed way over the edge of the property. Stand by. Oh, climbing through the weeds here for you. Do my own stunts. Ooh, <laughs> that's got a pricker bush up the backside. <laughs> All right, but we are going to make this happen. Now, uh, just for clarity, I did switch to super wide fish eye angle lens mode. So I'm going to move real slow here so as to not make people motion sick. But I have to be right up close and personal on this thing. It's the only way I can get it in the camera frame. Long story short, things like this uh, rear cargo rack on the back here, that's a nice little option that you can get applied to these Shastas. So remember, just because the one that we're looking at today doesn't have it, doesn't mean that it can't. Uh, now you might notice there's no ladder on the back here. The thing is with Bishes, we could kind of make checking out the roof and keeping on top of that our problem instead of yours. 
and we can actually do that at no cost to you. That's part of our Diamond Club uh, benefits that you get as a uh, ambitious customer for every new or used RV that you purchase from us. Um, the, uh, the Diamond Club includes a lot of different things, but part of that is no cost annual winterizations. And while we're doing that, we can also just hop up to the roof and inspect your roof line for you as well as anything else. Uh, if we see something that needs attention while we're up there, you can tell us yay or nay, go ahead and take care of that. So if an RV doesn't have a ladder, it doesn't necessarily have to be your problem. Now there's no allowances for factory solar. Again, this is a little simpler series of camper, but it does have allowances over here for a simple little portable uh, panel in case you wanted to you know, hook something uh, up that you could leave on the ground to kind of help keep that battery topped off. And one last little thing over here, we've got Uncle Gary's leash latch in case he ties one on and you gotta tie him down like a wallaby sport. Does, does anybody even get my stupid references anymore? Tie me wallaby down, sport, tie me wallaby down. Anybody? By the way, I've had a lot of people wondering where they can get one of these hats. You can't yet, we're, we're literally working on it. When the nerd merch, for lack of a better explanation, becomes available, I will certainly let you folks know. But in the meantime, I will also leave you links in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability on these. And also, if you would, if you kind of like this, but you're like, mm, I don't know, maybe the color palette's not for me, or do you have something with a little more pizzazz? I, maybe I don't want quite that basic. I will leave you some links in the video description to check out like a J Flight, a Cherokee version. The Cherokee version, by the way, just has a big giant U dinette lounge in the back instead of the split sofa mini dinette, which can open up the opportunity for a bigger guest sleeper. So we've got a couple different versions of this. East to West makes a good version of it. And I might leave you a link to a Shasta with a slide, just in case you wanted something with a little more space. You let us know which one works for you. And uh, if you appreciate how we show you the good with the bad, we, and we shoot you straight, treat you fair, telling you things like it's a camp queen and not making you ask, hit that subscribe button and I'd love to see you next time around. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone. Remember to bring those sunglasses. Whew, this is bright. Mm -hmm.